Thank you. Thank you, dear friends. First of all, my sincere apologies for not able to make it to the program physically because I am down with COVID. I am relatively okay, uh, but decided not to travel because I don't want to spread this infection among the friends over there. So thanks to Ben Shipai, Dr. Manoj, Parath, Sunil Jain, all my friends for giving me this opportunity. So let me start with this. So the topic that we are going to discuss today is 780G revolution. And this is a revolution which has resulted from the innovation of an advanced hybrid closed loop system. And why is it a revolution? It's a revolution because this has been a solution to a century old dream. And now it has become a reality, or very close to the reality. Thanks to multiple components, of which, in my personal opinion, the control algorithm or the mathematical algorithm is one of the most pivotal components. So if somebody is asking you, what are the components of an artificial pancreas or an automated insulin delivery system? The components are, what? An insulin pump. Then you have the continuous glucose sensor. A control algorithm, of course, you need to have a rapid acting analog insulin. And for the best rapid acting analog insulin, the research is still ongoing. It should match with the control algorithm. And this has been the history of evolution. It all started with the threshold suspend, which we started using in India in the year 2012. And then predictive low glucose suspend, hybrid closed loop, and eventually. Now, for more than one year, in India, we have been successful, successfully using the AHCL algorithm. So what is special about 780G? The Metronic Minimal 780G is very unique. And in sharp contrast to all the existing insulin pumps and other devices, it will automatically change the basal rate every five minutes. It is also capable of auto-correction bonusing. Again, once in every five minutes. All of these are based on the sensor glucose and the algorithm. And this is how the 780G is commercially available. And this is how it works together with multiple components. You can have your mobile phone, connected to your pump, your sensor, and the data, the entire data is stored in the CareLink server and can be shared with multiple care partners. And as a doctor or a healthcare professional, we can look at the data, you can download the data, you can analyze the data, either from your office computer or even you can remotely monitor your patients in your mobile phone. So these are the limitations and indicators, the approved indications. Type 1 diabetes is the indication. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using in type 2 diabetes. You can use in type 2 diabetes as well. The algorithm is primarily meant for absolute insulin deficiency. And it works very well in type 2 diabetes as well. But remember, it is currently approved only from ages seven onwards. And for those subjects who are requiring less than eight units and more than 250 units, the smart guard or the automated feature will not function. And you should always use a clinical judgment. And many of you are aware that we have published the consensus insulin pump guidelines where the contraindications are also clearly mentioned. The patients should have the mind and the time to engage in educational activities, to get to know how to use the device properly, how to calculate carbohydrate, how to bolus, how to deploy the insulin pump. So the instructions on the pump screen, the patient should be able to read and implement it, <clears throat> or else don't start it. 
And though it is an automated insulin level device, for every patient, it is started in the manual mode. So you have to start in the manual mode. Uh, so though it is an automated insulin delivery device, uh, when you are initiating the pump, you should be starting this only in the manual mode. You should run in the manual mode for two days, 48 hours, before you can switch over to the smart guard feature. The base cell rates need to be manually programmed when you are initiating the insulin pump. And even when it is in the manual mode. The following features will be available. That is suspend on low and is suspend before low. The smart guard feature or the automated feature regulates basal insulin. And this is actually meant for optimizing or maximizing this time between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. And what is the goal? The goal is to make sure that 85%, at least 85% of the time, is spent in smart guard. If more than 85%, it is well and good. And it uses the programmed insulin carb ratio and the active insulin time. So active insulin time also need to be programmed manually. And this has been a challenge which uh, all of us are very well aware. Every night and every day is different for somebody who has insulin deficiency, especially type 1 and difficult to treat type 2 diabetes. So one day it will be hyperglycemia. The other day it will be persistent hyperglycemia. So you cannot replicate. And hence you require a different base cell for every night. And that is exactly what the TV does. 780G can even deliver auto-correction bonuses early and automatically to reduce the risk of high glucose and low glucose. And there are three smart guard targets as pointed here. So you can see that three options are highlighted. 100, 100. You are deploying the pump. You as a doctor. If we are minimized or if we are scared of hypoglycemia, if the diabetes is already under control, then probably you have to go for a different option to avoid hyperglycemia. And in the upper panel, you have the sensor glucose, and in the lower panel, you have the base cell delivery. If you follow me, when the sensor glucose is falling, you can see the base cell delivery is automatically reduced, the rate is reduced, and when there is a propensity for a hypoglycemia, the basal delivery itself is stopped, it is suspended, and it is suspended before the onset of a hypo, before hypoglycemia. And then automatically, when it is back to normal, then the basal delivery is received. And the target here is 120 milligrams per deciliter. Now the basics, of course, I won't be going into the details of 780G because that requires a dedicated insulin pump workshop, which, of course, all of you can participate in the DTECON conference in the month of May at New Delhi. And this is an algorithm which is currently engaged in 780G, the PID algorithm, the proportional integral derivative. The proportional is indicative of how far the sensor glucose is from the set target in the pump. Integral indicates long, how long it has been awaited the time. And derivative is again the rapidity by which sensor glucose is changed. And this is one of the best algorithms and is considered to be one of the algorithms which is superior to any other automated insulin delivery device. <coughs> And what are the auto correction? The bolus is delivered automatically. And this is usually happens when it has reached the maximum 
auto based delivery. And the sensor glucose is above 120 milligrams per deciliter. And the, by default, the auto correction is on. I will show you an example. So here you have the maximum base cell delivery over here, and the glucose is still very high. The upper panel, you can see that glucose is very high, and it is above 126. And that's the time when it has only reached the maximum base cell. It will start auto borders. An auto borders once in every five minutes up to 12 times in one hour. <clears throat> and this is a shortcut to the timing range. The right arrow for shortcut to the timing range screen. And if you can press it once again, then it will provide you the information on time above range, below range, and so on. So where do we have the evidence? Do we have the evidence on when it, all the publications are there comparing with the PLGS, you can see that on an average, the TAR, which is accomplished in the clinical trials, is around 75 to 80 percent, with negligible time below range. And when compared to the conventional multiple daily injections and flash glucose monitoring with type 1 diabetes, the ADAPT, which is a randomized clinical trial, comparing HCL with the conventional modalities have shown the nominal reduction in the hemoglobin A1C up to 7.32% with HCL and that too with negligible episodes of hypoglycemia. So now the question on, <clears throat> isn't it very expensive? The common man cannot afford it. So how do you justify it? And it has been said that 70 dg is associated with an incremental gain of 1.95 quality adjusted life years compared to flash glucose monitoring and MDI or with a standalone insulin pump. So the long-term projections indicate that the use of a minimum 780G represents a cost-effective solution in preventing the so-called complications in diabetes. And hence, it needs to be promoted. And that is the reason why the patients are excited. And look at his excitement. This is a 25-year-old boy, one of our own initial patients on this therapy. And this is on the fifth day of 780. Look at the message in the dedicated WhatsApp. I have slept peacefully at night, continuously for eight hours. Yeah, and this is after 16 years. And that is when type 1 diabetes was diagnosed. And uh, he is grateful to the diabetes innovation. It has resulted in a peaceful sleep at night after 16 years. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. And these are all patient experiences. An eight-year-old girl with type 1 diabetes. <clears throat> and uh, he was previously on a basal bonus regimen. And now switched over to 70 dg. And this is one month later, 91% time in range. And this is the care link data. This is how the care link will look like. And this is the ambulatory glucose profile report from the care link. Another case, 27 years, 92% time in range. 92% time within range. Of course, I'm going to share some setbacks and negative experiences as well. And uh, this girl, seven year old girl, was having good control. Before 780G, the A1C was 8.6 percentage. And after 780G, this, uh, the time in range, 98 percent. So those patients who are having a TER more than 90, of course, the hemoglobin A1C is going to be below 6 percentage. So it is extremely good, unbelievable accomplishments. But still, because of the, the frequent blockades of the insulin pump, the silhouette injection, Infusion set resulting in permanent scar marks. And uh, for a young child, the device is too cumbersome and uh, heavy and very uncomfortable while playing or dancing. And they decided to switch over to a much more comfortable patch pump. Of course, the patch pump such as Onipod is currently not available in India and it is very expensive too. So every technology will have 
its own benefits and many multiple demerits. And that is why we keep on innovating. And maybe the best is yet to come. And this is case number four, a 17-year-old type 1 diabetes. Duration, 12 years with an A1s at 9.5. Again, after switching over to 780G, phenomenal, 95%. Another one, and this we deployed 10 days ago, and this is a TER. TER display is for the last 24 hours at the pump. It is 100%. So the results are unbelievable. Incredible results with 780G. And this has been the journey. This has been the journey of innovating insulin delivery devices. If you are interested, please go through this review which we have published. And why is it so special? Because this has been one of the most cited reviews on evolution of insulin delivery devices. In conclusion, I would like to make a comment. Many of our patients may not be affordable for using somebody. But always remember to convey the information that this life-saving device is currently available. Never deny the benefits for those who are eligible. The affordable might procure it. But the unaffordable, they might find a way to procure it. Once again, thank you.